What up, you big dumb idiot? Um, it's me, your dumb queen, Ali Makovsky. Back with another amazing episode of Resting Bitch with Ali Makovsky. Yeah, this is my podcast where um, I just say whatever the fuck I want. It's, um, you know, it's a decent podcast. And that's all I'll say about it. Um, okay. I need my jewel or else I'm going to freak the fuck out. Oh, it's right here. I go through jewel panics often. I think, um, I think it gives me something to focus on, you know? So it's kind of like when, when you, like you're a little kid and you hurt, let's say your arm. And so your parent or whoever like pinches you on the leg. Then you're like, look, now you're not thinking about your arm. That's what the jewel is for me. It's a distraction. It's a coping distraction. Um, yeah, I think every night I tell myself I'm not going to drool anymore because I constantly am coughing and it hurts at a certain point, but that sweet menthol just brings me right back in. It's hard not to. I love it. I'm addicted. It's just so easy. Look at how small this little bitch is. It's impossible. It's so convenient, you know? It is so convenient to smoke. People who still have those big ass, like, vape calculators, those Texas instrument vapes, those are crazy. You know what I love when my, like, dumbass, dumb, 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 dumbass friends have those vapes where you have to, like, put your own little juice in and suddenly they think they're, like, These chemists, they're like, you know, you just got to get the right. I can't even pretend to be smart. They're like, you just got to get the right gram to quad ratio or else the coils are going to burn. I can't tell if they sound smart or like crackheads, but yeah, get rid of those. Throw them out. Throw them the fuck out. Get a jewel. I'm not sponsored by jewel, but I am extremely open to it. Jewel's kind of weird. They, like, don't really fuck with anyone or anything. Except for gas stations and smoke shops. It's the only place you see Jewel advertisements. They keep it real low-key. Probably because, um... Yeah. They're they're probably gonna get, um... Really, like, shut down. Or, um... Like, they'll they'll get lawsuits for sure. Because we're gonna find out that they're actually very bad for us. You can tell sometimes when you're hitting it. There's moments where it like burns in a certain way where you're like, this is it. This is it. I'm going to find out what popcorn lung is. Yeah, I take my jewel to the movie theater. I'm like, I'll I'll get some popcorn lung, please. Popcorn lung sounds scary. And it actually, when I looked up online before I had my jewel, I looked up side effects of jeweling because I've never really been like a vape girl. Hashtag vape girl. Hey guys, tag me on social media at hashtag vape girl. No, but if you guys could all comment on my pictures on Instagram, hashtag vape girl, that would actually be so sick. But anyway, before I was a self-proclaimed vape girl I looked up side effects of drooling and all it said was popcorn lung and it scared me so much because I just pictured you know when you cook pop popcorn in the microwave I just pictured that happening inside my chest and it like freaked me out and I got that thing like phantom popcorn lung where it felt like every time I thought about it it was happening even though I wasn't vaping Like, I just, like, thought it into existence, and it really freaked me out. Like, my chest is, like, tightening up right now just thinking about it. I'm so dramatic. Um, Yeah, but then when I looked it up, 
popcorn lung is just like a term for pneumonia. And I'm like, I'll get fucking pneumonia in a heartbeat. Pneumonia. I'm not 98. Pneumonia ain't going to kill me. But I think I'm actually wrong about that. I, I think people do die when they're young of pneumonia. But I could put up more of a fight at my age. So I got time to beat off pneumonia. <laughs> beat off pneumonia. It sounds like I'm jacking pneumonia off. I have plenty of time to beat off pneumonia. Pneumonia can, like, get it. I'm on a roll this morning. It was going to be a good day. Um, yeah, so I'm jeweling. I accidentally got... Um, so there's two different types of tobaccos. There's classic tobacco and Virginia tobacco. Virginia is more sweet and classic. Literally tastes like burnt-ass tobacco. Oh, my God. I accidentally got classic instead of Virginia. And I've just felt like... Like... I don't know how that even makes me feel. It's kind of a mixture between two completely different things. Like part of me feels like some type of stuck up lawyer, some pretentious asshole who's like, I only do classic tobacco. And then the other part of me just feels like, you know, some sort of like low life person who... I don't even know. It just, it doesn't make me feel good is what I'm saying. I feel conflicted about it. Virginia's much better and I'd like to get one Virginia and one, I'm going to name my firstborn Virginia, boy or girl. And then my secondborn will be named Cool Mint. I like menthol better though. Anyway, I get one of each. I get one menthol, one Virginia tobacco. And then I kind of go back and forth. The tobacco is more of a um, entree and the menthol is um, like dessert. You know, it's the breath mint when you leave the restaurant. So I like to switch it up. I'm, you know, I'm not like other girls. I'm, <laughs> I'm not like other girls. I smoke two different jewel pods. I love that phrase. I'm not like other girls. Okay. Bitch. I'm doing a new joke right now about how women are too supportive of each other. We're like overcompensating. You'll have to come watch me perform to hear the joke. You ain't getting that shit for free. But it's a fun joke. I got a lot of new tags and new jokes while I was in St. Louis, Missouri with the land crab himself, Andrew Santino. Applause break for Andrew. Thank you, studio audience. We do have a studio audience here, but we actually duct tape their mouths before we start and we actually blindfold them as well. But they're here. Um, yeah, I was in St. Louis. You know, it's crazy. This is just kind of, just before I start the story, I'm going to tell you what the story is about, like the message, the theme that you should take away from the story is that you never know what's going to happen in your life, whether it be good or bad or whatever. Like you can think you have an idea of like what's going to come or like what you're going to do or how things are going to kind of work out. But until you do the damn thing, you have no idea. That's the over arching, overarching, overarching, over, overarching. Yeah, I don't know, but that's the kind of general vibe of the story. Pretty much like, okay, so there's like a lot of comedy festivals. Maybe when I say comedy festivals, you're thinking Coachella, but for comedy. But remember that People don't go out to see comedy the same way they go out to see music, you know? So yeah, sure, it is a festival in the sense that there's like maybe different venues where people are performing and you like walk from one place to the other to see a different, you know, comic or whatever. It's like that. But a lot of people who start comedy festivals are comedians who live in like a smaller town, like say um, Omaha, Nebraska, or... Um, like Phoenix, Arizona or something, you know, people who live in those towns who are comedians 
who want to provide more opportunities for themselves and other comics. So they start festivals a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times they will start festivals in their like hometown at like the three or four major venues where comedy shows happen throughout the year. And then for like, you know, a weekend they do shows. And so... Um, a lot of times so they can get money to make the festival as good as possible. They'll have comics submit to perform at their festival. So they'll be like, so they'll post about something or a friend of a friend will tell you about it. And then, you know, you go on their website for the festival you pay like 20 bucks. Some are like crazy expensive. And it's like, I'm not paying that much just to do a 10 minute showcase set and have to fly myself out there. So, um, <laughs> there's like a little old moth baby, but, um, yeah. So, so, so they'll have comics pay to like submit to their festival like 20 bucks or something. And then you like submit a video of your comedy and blah, blah, blah. And so like two years ago, I kind of wanted to do more festivals. I've only done like three. Cause I just figured like, it's going to cost so much to fly somewhere to not really get paid to do comedy. But it, I was like, it'll be a good experience and I'll get to meet comics from all over the U.S. So that way, say I'm in Atlanta for my first time, I already know like three Atlanta comics because they were on that festival with me. That's really like, I don't know, that's kind of what I was like taking from my experience. Because like, I, you know, the shows in Atlanta aren't going to be like different than the shows in L.A. So the festival, it's like if I just booked three shows, whatever, it doesn't matter. I really just went on a random festival rant um yeah so there's like the small independent festivals like that where it's kind of comic ran for comics by comics um they're they can be really fun um and then there's also like the huge festivals like cluster fest just for laughs things like that that are like big corporate festivals that you know whatever so Anyway, about two years ago, I did the um, Flyover Comedy Festival, which is in St. Louis, and um, it was snowing at the time, it was raining, it was so cold, and I'm like, I'm from Long Beach, I'm like from a city, I'm from the sun, the sunny, sunshine state of California, and so I'm still like not really used to snow, so when I went to St. Louis... I was just like very unimpressed my first time. It was cold. You know, it's like very Midwesty. Like people just get married young there because there's only like four cool things to do in the city. So once you finish doing those, you're like, I guess I'll just get married now. And then you get married young. So that way you have time to like start a second family, have an affair, get a divorce, remarry. And then by that time, you're like, you know, 40. And then you're probably going to die of a heart attack at 50 because all the food there is, um, I mean, it's so good, but it's not good for you. But yeah, it's delicious. But yeah, people just like drink and go to bars. And I think that's it, really. Have, have like very... um have very, uh, why am I blanking on the word? You know, the like normal sex where it's just like facing each other and that's it. Like they just have very normal ass sex. Missionary, missionary, missionary. missionary. They have missionary sex. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, and then, so anyway, after the comedy festival, which was, like, super fun and cool, but, like, just what else do you do? I was like, man, I'm probably never going to be, like, not that 
I was just like, oh, I'm not going to be back here for a while. I've just never heard of like people really going to St. Louis that often. It's not like a hot spot comedy destination. And I'm, you know, made a bunch of friends out there and I was just like, yeah, I'm probably not going to see you for like a long time. But like, it was nice to meet you. If you're in L.A., hit me up. And then what do you fucking know? A year or two years later, I get to go with Land Crab Santino and I got to see all those people and the weather was so nice out there. And I really enjoyed it. I, um, I, 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 it's nice. I don't think I could live there though. But part of me, they have like those really old school, like old, old, old homes from like the 1880s and 90s. And they're just so beautiful. But they're in St. Louis. I mean, I like it there, but... I'm, I would. I just wouldn't know what to do if I actually lived there. I would like to buy a home there someday. But would I? I'm sure there's like other houses from the 18, from the late 1800s and other places that might have more activities than going to an arch. They have that big ass arch. It literally just looks like half of a McDonald's sign on steroids. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, so that was fun. What did we do? I feel like we got into some shit. We went, we we were on those bird scooters. We just like birded all over. We were getting pretty ignorant on the birds. We were just like in the middle of the road. It was so fun though. The shows were really good. We were at Helium. Yeah, we had a good time. It's really fun opening for Santino because the people who come out to his shows are like, you know, just fans of comedy and they're cool people younger sometimes they're older I like when older people like me it makes me feel warm and fuzzy I love old people like with their white ass hair maybe because we have that in common our white ass hair yeah old people are sweet and when they're like we really liked you I think it makes me feel like um I'm getting accepted by my grandmother um yeah, there's like um there's a lot of bros in St. Louis. A lot of white people. A lot of white people. Also a lot of black people. That's it though. I didn't I don't think I saw one Mexican in St. Louis. No, that's not true. That's not true. But it was really only like white and black. Like I like there's no Asians. You know what? That's not true either. I did get my nails done. Yeah, it's not very diverse. It, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I guess why would anyone like... Like if 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 you have like a unique ethnic background, you're probably going to go to a place that has a lot of people in your culture or whatever. Like Long Beach has like a huge, huge Filipino community, I think. I think there's also, like, I mean, Long Beach is just, like, super diverse. There's, like, because Long Beach is so big, so there's a lot of different communities. So I'm sure if you have family who's still out of the country and you're, like, you got to come to the United States and they're, like, hmm, where should I go, St. Louis? It'd be, like, no, unless you're just, like, white or black. You'd want to go to Long Beach or somewhere that your community is. Or you take your you make your own path. You go to St. Louis. You're surrounded by whites who eat mayo on everything. And that's what you do. Have fun. Have fun. Be safe. St. Louis was cool though. Yeah, and then um oh yeah, and then another thing. I went to Portland a year ago. I don't know why. I went to Portland. I'm really drawing a blank. Did I go just for fun? There's no way I would just go to Portland for shits and gigs. Shits and giggles. Why did I go to Portland? Maybe I did just go for fun. 
to do shows. I think because everyone, this is what's annoying. People think they know me because of my voice or my general vibe. People think I'm like this chill ass bitch. I'm not, okay? I'm a crazy psycho. Not really. I mean, a little bit, but people just like think that they like know my vibe. Like I'm wearing weed socks right now. I do not smoke weed. I hate smoking weed. I think it's so dumb. It just gets me like super fucked up, but I'm wearing weed socks. So it's like on the outside, you might think you know me, but you don't know a thing about me, bitch. So I think people just kept saying like, you got to go to Portland. You love it. You're just like, so you're so Portland. People, people, you know, it's so annoying. You know, it's so annoying when I'm out to eat with people and they go, do you eat meat? Are you vegan? No, bitch. No. No. People just think that I'm like this person and I'm not. And you know what else bothers me now that I'm on this fucking thing? Guys. Guys um, who don't really know me very well and like maybe have a crush on me or something because they have this idea of who I am in their head and they picture me in them like in a certain way and that I'm going to be like this chill girlfriend who's just like funny and a good hang. I am psychotic in relationships. Ask my last boyfriend. I'm a crazy bitch. But they think they know me because, you know, maybe they're listening to the podcast. Maybe they've seen my stand up online, you know, whatever other ways they might have seen me. And they kind of know me. And they think that, like, you know, I'm going to be the one that is going to be like that chill ass, cool girlfriend. Or whatever it is. It's just, I mean, I get it too. I'm kind of like, anytime I have a crush on a dude, I picture our marriage, our kids, our life. But I don't like, I don't actually get caught up in my head and like hit them as though, hit, hit them up as though like, I just keep it real cool. You got to keep it cool. I try and like talk to dudes as if I'm just like their their homie, their buddy who they shoot BB guns with or whatever. And I leave it up to them cuz I don't want to be responsible for those feelings. Oh my god. Some people just like commit too soon. They get invested way too quickly and then it's like slow down. If you had a chance, you just ruined it. Oh my god, people are fucking nuts. So, what was I talking about though? Um, yeah, so I'm not a chill. Oh, Portland. Yeah, people like you got to freaking go to Portland. You're going to love it. I mean, another place where there's literally so many whites. Last time I was in Portland, I counted 5 people who weren't white. And then they have on all their shops it says like we welcome refugees and it's like the refugees don't want your friendship bracelets. There's like a store for friendship bracelets. The refugees aren't finally coming to America away from away from their war-torn, you know, home of origin, flying into Portland and being like, oh, finally an antique store. You fucking Portland is Portland's cool, but y'all are y'all are kind of nuts though. I mean, there's so many whites there. It's like everyone has a Black Lives Matter poster on their front lawn. And it's like um, there's no black life in Portland. So, yeah, it's, yeah, whatever. Portland, Portland's fine, though. Decent food, cool bars. It's just very like, um, it's over woke, woke over easy, woke over medium, scrambled woke. Yeah. Yeah. 
So anyway, I went to Portland like a year ago or something. Not even a year ago. It wasn't that long ago. But then I was like, yeah, I'm probably like just not going to be back in Portland anytime soon. And guess what? Biatch, I'm going to be back there this weekend with Rogan. So surprise. You know what? Portland has really good shopping. There's a lot of good vintage shopping. There, you know what? There are, now that I'm thinking about it, there's a lot of like, um, I think there are like a, a lot of Thai people in Portland as well. Anyway, yeah, Portland's like very political, it seems like. I mean, where, who, who, where isn't right now though, you know? I'm talking a lot of shit and I'm kind of starting to regret it. Not regret it, but I don't know. I feel kind of bad. Portland hasn't done anything to me. I had a good time when I was out there. I know why I was in Portland. I did Mike Falzone's Friends and Friends show at this theater. And yeah, and I think I like booked a show or two before that one. Okay, now I remember why I was there. But when I told people I was going, they were like, you're going to love Portland. You're not going to want to leave. And then I went to one open mic there and I was like, absolutely, I want to go. I do not want to be here. I'm playing the freaking Moda Center. I've never performed in a center before. Do you understand how crazy that is? One of my friends who I met when I was in Portland, I was like, I was like, um... Oh, no, this is someone else. These, well, whatever, it doesn't matter. I told my buddies who live in Portland, I was like, hey, I'm going to be in Portland August 9th. Are you going to be there? And they were like, yeah, what's up? Like, what are you what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I have a show. Um, I can probably get you on, like, the guest list. And they were like, cool, cool, cool. Where is it? And I had to be all humble about it. Um, I don't know. I think just like this place called the Moda Center, you know, where your home basketball team plays. Yeah, just that place, the place that was built for live stand up comedy. I hope an air horn goes off during my set. I think I feel like I already made this joke on this podcast, but maybe like the shocker symbol, but as a foam finger. When I'm performing, I'm going to sell that as merch. <laughs> a foam shocker finger. I'm sure they already have that out there. It's not really an original thought. Um, yeah. And then I'm going to Shoreline Amphitheater, which is not in San Francisco, but it is in the Bay Area. People are very worked up over, over referring to, over, uh, me and Rogan referring to it as San Francisco. Whatever, you know. Hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. It's in Mountain View. I mean, obviously we're calling it San Francisco. Who the fuck knows where Mountain View is? What's Mountain View? I mean... I think it's near like Silicon Valley, which I've never been to, but I'm hoping to meet like a a little tech daddy or tech mommy and just get snatched up. Have a second life up in the up in the valley of uh apps. Oh I'm very scared because I'm doing jujitsu today and because I've been like gone and busy all week. I haven't gone in a week. I haven't been to jujitsu in a week, so I'm gonna get pretty fucked today. It's not gonna be good. Yeah, I'm scared. I'm very scared. I get a lot of, oh, I almost, I was so close to, I have this thing in my head where I really want to fight someone. I've never been in a fight my whole life. Never in my whole life have I been in a fight. And I'm not a violent person, really. But part of me wonders how I would hold up in a fight. So I really want to get into a genuine, not planned fight. 
but for the right reasons. Like, I, like I'm not, I don't want to just like start shit just to start shit. But like, if someone says something racist and is like uh, an ignorant piece of shit, or or someone just like you know like shoves you know when people just like shove you when there's like plenty of room to get past you oh my god like I I would yeah something like that something like more justified to start a fight just because I want to know how I would do but last night I almost got myself in that situation and it made me realize how much of a bitch I am when it comes down to it because there was this really drunk dude at the comedy store last night it was like midnight or 1 a.m so obviously he's like pretty fucked up and he's not being himself but I was almost expecting him to like not be a piece of shit and like a regular person with brain cells but after midnight at the comedy store everyone's pretty gone And I was expecting too much of him. But he was smoking like this big ass fucking joint on the patio. And like we can't have that. You have to be on the sidewalk. And it was like coming into the hallway. So I was like really annoyed. Because like I said, I'm not chill. I don't. I'm not a chill bitch. So I was like, hey, you got to smoke that on the sidewalk. You can't smoke that over here. And he was just, like, not listening. And that shit pisses me off. When you feel, like, ignored or not listened to, it really... That that stuff, like, triggers me, like, deep down. Like, being blatantly ignored or not helped in a situation where I feel helpless and I'm asking for help. There's... Oh, my God. There's a security guard who works at the comedy store who I would love to fist fight because he's just like a rude ass bitch whatever I don't need to get in into that it's neither here nor there this guy last night was just like a dumb little dumb 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 you know and he wasn't listening to me and I was just getting so annoyed and he just like instead of just like smoking it on the sidewalk which is 20 feet away He just like, he he just like kind of smokes it a little bit more and then puts it into his little container and is like, ooh, see, see? And I just, I, I like couldn't even stop myself. There was no filter. I literally just went, (laughs) I said, dumbass. And he looked at me. I'm like, oh, you can finally hear me now, you dumbass. So he finally looks at me when I call him a dumbass and acknowledges my existence and my presence. And his eyes were filled with rage. I could see it. And that would have been the perfect opportunity to, like, practice my fighting skills. But I immediately just, like, looked away and walked into the manager's office and, like, hid for a second. I really just bitch out pretty easily. But I will fight someone soon, so don't fuck with me. I'm strong. I'm getting stronger and stronger. Um, What time were we at? Oh, my God. I'm killing it today. I want to talk about... I went to... So you guys heard, if you guys are listening to this in order, like regular people. um, I got this um, pastry at my local coffee shop and they make all their pastries in-house from scratch so good Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm -hmm. oh my god this is my asmr portion where i eat a walnut maple scone into the microphone I want to do a joke. I don't know how I'd make it work, but I thought of it last night. I might have just been in, like, the context and the history between, you know, me and my friends and them knowing me and stuff. But just about 
how when you're a girl, everything, it feels like when you're around people that you like or whatever, like you have to do everything like cute and soft and like kind of like sexy and like, mm. and so I want to do a joke about me sneezing in front of guys. And instead of being like, Achoo! I'm just like, <laughs> I don't want to do it over the camera. But it's pretty much just an orgasm sound. You're like, uh, <laughs> chew. <gasps> oh, God. It's pretty funny. If you're a dumb bitch like me, chew. And then I want to do a joke about how it's hard to make fart sound sexy. But yeah, whatever, I'll figure it out. That's what I'm working on right now. My podcast is my open mic. Um, oh, this is exciting. If you're still listening to the pod, I need your feedback on something. I'm going out of town. And <clears throat> and I can either like pre-record an episode and have it just be like a goofy, silly thing. That's pre-recorded. Or when I'm out of town, I can stick to my normal schedule, but have one of my friends be be me. Not like a costume or like pretend to be me, but like if I had one of, you know, a comic that I know, just do what I'm doing right now. Would you prefer that? Or maybe I should pre-record... No, I think I think I like that. Let me know what you think. I don't really care, but I kind of do because you guys are the ones who are listening to it. Or I can like pre-record me and a guest and put that out when I'm gone. That way I'm not talking about my week because I'll already, you know what I mean? Huh, something to think about. Yeah. Do you want it to be me and a guest or do you want a guest to just take over my show for one episode when I'm out of town? Let me know on my Instagram, resting be pod, or my main account. But you should follow my podcast account. I don't really know why. Maybe just like backup, backup clout. How embarrassing would it be if my podcast got ended up getting more followers than my regular? I would just delete my regular account. Switch my username to my podcast account and then be like, <laughs> just kidding, bitch. But anyway, um, I talked about donating blood a couple episodes ago, maybe two episodes or three episodes ago. And guess what? I'm anemic. I am anemic. Not like full blown anemic, but so they, before you do your blood, they test this thing called your ferritin level. They just put this little device on your finger and then it just like, I don't know what it does, but it, I guess counts your ferritin level. Mine's, um, when they tested me, mine was at a 14 and I guess that's like on the lower side of normal. And I think that's why I'm so tired all the time. Because I also saw, they like sent me this paper that explains what having like low iron, iron deficiency, like what can cause it or what foods or drinks to avoid. Something that's like really not helpful for iron is coffee. And I fucking pipeline coffee into my veins is that the phrase pipeline i'm i'm pipe main i don't know but yeah i'd be doing coffee 24 7 so i gotta cut that shit out only one coffee for me a day and then yeah i think i just need to start eating like iron rich foods more not dieting or anything, just just eating foods to help my energy because I'm just like a tired bitch all the time. I'm so sleepy. And it sucks with comedy because I'm always out late, 
but I just want to be in bed so early. Like if comedy happened at 4 p.m., I would be thriving so hard. 4 p.m. comedy would be like a dream. Go to bed no later than 10 every night. No later than 10 every night. Ideally at like 8 p.m. in bed at 8. Pass out at 9. That's a dream. Wake up early, freaking grind, 6 a.m. But I can't do that, really, because I'm out till 2 in the morning, and I'm not waking up at 6 or 7 or 8 or 9. I'm waking up at 10 at the earliest. But in my heart, in my soul, I'm a morning person. I want to be one of those morning people, but I just can't. That's fine. You know, the sacrifices we make to live our dreams. Okay. I'm just going to answer some of these um, questions and then I'm going to wrap this shit up. Um, okay. Let's see. <sighs> Top three most influential movies in your life. Okay, first one would be Austin Powers' Gold Member. I remember seeing it in theaters with my dad when I was young and just thinking it was so funny. And my dad thought it was so funny and we would just quote it and bond. It was like a bonding movie for us. And that stands out to me a lot. Austin Powers. Um, it's such a good movie. It's such a good movie. All of them. So good. And then another movie, Borat. Borat is one of my all-time favorites. My mom took me and my sisters to go see it, and she walked out of the theater. She was pissed. But I just, I would do, like, this Borat impression all the time. And it was pretty good back in the day when I try and do it now. Maybe it was just good back in the day because I was, like, in fifth grade, like, being all like, whoa, whoa, wee, whoa, my wife. And maybe it was just better then because it was just cute. And so people kind of uh, encourage me more than, you know, realistically I should have been praised for it. But, man, that movie, I, uh, it was so good. And then Bruno, like, just was not good. But Borat was a banger. And then the third most influential movie in my life, um, A Star is Born with Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper because that's just me, you know? I'm Allie. She's Allie. I worked in food service. She worked in food service. My romantic love interest is an alcoholic musician. Which comedians do you look up to? Oh, man. That's kind of a loaded question because I don't quite know what you mean by look up to. Yeah, that's kind of a tough question because we, you know, there's such a rich history of comedians throughout the ages and... I'm so present minded with all this meditation I'm doing that it's hard for me to look into the past or think about the future. So in this moment, someone I really look up to would be Fahim Anwar because he's such a good writer. He's so funny. He has such a unique um, perspective and I feel like he's always working on new things and he's just like a cool, humble, chill dude. You know, he just like, I just, yeah, I, I look up to him as a person and as a comedian. I have a lot of respect for him and I just think he works really hard and is like a very nice, chill dude, you know, and he's so smart. Anyway, I'm just going to name, I'm just doing one because I don't, I can just go on like a whole rampage. I want to like, um, Q-tips don't really do it for me. 
I want to get, I want to go to the doctor and have them do like one of those medical ear cleanings. Last time I tried to do it, I think I was like a senior in high school and they said, I don't have enough earwax to do that. And I'm like, but I do, but just do it. This isn't a question of whether or not you can do it. I know you can. So clean my ear. Dr. Leslie. Have you ever met someone named Leslie who's not a lesbian? Just quick question. Throwing it out there. There's some names where you like, you just kind of like live up to them. Like my, I have a joke about my dad's name being Larry. Name one Larry who's like a hot, cool, like, you know, just like activist or um, entrepreneur. I mean, Larry David, it's like, it's all Jews. My dad's Jewish. Larry David, it's like, you're kind of just like a character at that point. If your name's Larry, you're just like a character of a person. Larry, isn't there like, um, yeah, whatever. There's certain names, like, you know, there's a reason why everyone uses Chad as an example of like a surfer white dude. Because like when you're born and your parents name you Chad, there's just something that happens in your brain. Allison is such a boring name. That's my name, Allison. But I shortened it to Allie because I knew that I was going to be a reckless bitch at some point in my life. And that's what you do when you're an Allison. You either stick to Allison and you become a lawyer, a dentist, um, a teacher. But when you're young and you and you make that switch from Allison to Allie, you know you're getting suspended from school. You know you're dropping out of college. You know you're sleeping with people you shouldn't be sleeping with. And you learn from those mistakes and it builds character. And that's why Allie's are more interesting than Allison's. Okay. How's jujitsu going? Fucking great. I wish I had like more time to really focus on it, but um, comedy comes first. And so, but I'm going to be in New York at the end of this month. I'm going to be in New York August 21st through the 27th. I'm doing shows. So if you live in that area, you can check on my website soon. I'm going to post those. I'm just making sure I uh, confirm all of the shows I'm doing before I post them. So that way I don't have to like go back and cancel or whatever. So I'm just waiting to post the shows I'm doing. And I'm also trying to add a couple more. So I'm I'm going to New York, but I think I'm going to do my friend who I've mentioned on this podcast a bunch of times, Diego Lopez. He um, teaches MMA and stuff. And so I'll probably take some classes with him. But I also want to go to my gym that's out here. I think they have a location in New York. So I want to check that out. Has Tyler, the creator, ever asked you to model shirts for him? No, which is really fucked up. But I used to be one of those kids in high school. I would drive up to Fairfax all the time. Like as soon as I got my license, I would drive up to Fairfax to his OG, um, his like first on Future store. And I would hang out there just hoping that he would be there because I just thought he was so cool. And one night, one day he was there and I'm like 17 or no, I'm not 18. I'm 17 at this point. And he's at the shop and I think he's so cool. And um, there were these two younger kids. They were probably like 15. And these two little skateboard kids, you know, they're like, are you going to the thing when the shop closes? And I was like, what thing? And it was some like art event. It was some like art gallery event. And I was like, I'll give you guys a ride because I want to go. And so I like, it was like me, my 17 year old ass, these two like 15 year olds. I wonder where where they are now. You know, I wonder what happened to them. But um, we ended up going to this art gallery and I'm just trying to like see Tyler for longer because I I thought he was cool, even though especially at that period of his life, he was like a really big dick to everyone. So maybe I just wanted to feel like shit for a little bit and be like, you know, told I was like a dumb white bitch. Um, 
which happened, you know. And then I went to this art gallery and I was sitting on this couch and Frank Ocean sat down right next to me and I'm 17. I don't know what to talk to Frank Ocean about. And I'm drinking these beers because they didn't check IDs there. And I'm like, oh, 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 uh, what, what beer are you drinking? That was what I talked to Frank Ocean about. What beer are you drinking? I don't need a new I'm from before you came. And then I think after call, like once I, I think once I ended up like moving in LA and doing comedy and stuff, I just kind of stopped caring as much as what other people were doing because I realized what I doing was what I what I doing what I'm doing is pretty cool. So shout out to the creator. I really fucked with you. I still fuck with you. But I don't stalk you anymore. So, you know, that's growth. Um, okay. Let me see what else we have here. If there's, how does it feel being ugly hot? It's kind of cool, you know, because I, I, sometimes I get like hot girl advantages and that's so nice because people treat hot people better. So if I'm like around mostly ugly people or just like whatever looking people and I'm like wearing makeup or I just like look cool, I look put together, I get hot girl advantages. And that's, you know, the life to live. But I'm always humbled and I always know my place when I'm around actual hot people and people just treat me like um, like a normal person and that hurts, but I get it. It's good to have that balance. It would it would be too much if I was just all hot and no ugly. What podcast do you listen to? I don't listen to many podcasts, but um, because they all just kind of like uh, I I it's hard for me to just like listen to something for that long. But if I'm on like a long road trip or something like that where I have some time and I want to listen to stuff. I will listen to Come Town. Um, I will listen to Tuesdays with Stories. And that's like my main two that I'll go to. Or sometimes I just look up someone who I want to hear like an interview of. And then I'll listen to whatever podcast they were on if I'm, like, going through a phase of, like, really fangirling over someone. Um, Why do we keep having mass shootings? I have no idea. It's really scary. I used to work at a movie theater. I was scared to work there. I used to work at this chicken wings place. I was scared to work there. I work at the comedy store. I'm scared to work there. It's, like, scary. It's, it's, it's really freaky. Freaky is not a good word to describe a mass shooting. You know, that's kind of a childish word. It's freaky. It's really freaky. But yeah, it's fucked up. It is fucked up. People make it political. People like, you know, want to be like, they support this person or that person. It's like, who the fuck cares? I support, I support people who are just living just doing their life stuff and then die. So, um, I don't care what they're killing for, who they're killing for. It doesn't matter. That's not what's important. What's important is that, um, it's not okay. Yeah. I'm not really like, um, I'm not a good person to be all, you know, wrong person to ask about that stuff. But I don't like it. I'll say that for sure. Not a fan. One time I went to a shooting range and I started crying the first time the gun went off. So just, you know, you can you can sleep safely and soundly tonight knowing that this girl ain't going to be the next to pop off. Okay. So say you're at the movies and you see me walk in, I'm alone because I don't go to the movies with people. Don't be like, oh my God, I hope she's not, you know, a terrorist. I'm safe. I'm a neutral territory. Um, wow, what a, 
what a fun way to end a podcast. Um, yeah, I guess that's it, though. I really, I got to go to BJJ after this, so I'm kind of on a time crunch. Thanks for listening. Um, we're on Spotify now. We're on, this is on YouTube. This is on Podbean. I don't know what that is, but it's there. It's on iTunes. It's on some other stuff. So tell your friends about it and keep keep um, following the podcast Instagram because it's fun to see your comments on there and stuff like that. So that's about it for this week. Later. Yeah, it could be more